even more competitive right. just because you were doing business the right way the whole time and working right. hard. You know, when, when I uh, got out of school and started really getting involved in the business in the 80s, I'm like, you know, who do I want to go after? Well, looking at the top Chevy dealer, top GM dealer in St. Louis to say, okay, where do we get, how do we get there? Mm -hmm. You know, and it's through a business plan, and it's through structuring, and a great friend of mine, Brian Bowden, who's uh, still with the corporation, but he was our zone manager, and he goes, how big is too big? Now, let's forecast this out. Have you ever thought about retailing over 2,000 new cars and trucks in a year? And back when we were doing 12 and 1,300, which is still a lot of units, and I said, 2,000, wow, that, uh, that sounds interesting. How do we get there? Well, it's with people. Not only the people, of course, that you cultivate as, as loyal customers, repeat referral, but it's the people that will wait on them, that will answer the phone mm -hmm. calls, answer the emails, and then holding on to those people. Mm -hmm. We've gone through a restructuring. We had a tremendous base of loyal 16, 25 plus year employees that, you know, retired. Mm -hmm. And now finding those people, you know, that will be committed, you know, for a mm -hmm. lifetime relationship you know, with the business and with your customers. Yeah, and so you're investing in people to grow the business, obviously Correct. one of those major things. So obviously you, you touched on it first thing off when you were talking about how your dad had a watchful eye on you and you were involved in the family business at a very, Poor very Diddy. young age. Tell us a little bit about sort of the positives and negatives of working in a family business. Because it seems like definitely you could it's learn a, a lot, but I'm sure there's both ends of this one. Sensitive question. But no, and, you know, in, in talking with other, you know, sons and daughters, you know, of, 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 of powerful business people that started it themselves. You know, my dad got out of the war mm -hmm. uh, at the age of 21, 22, and started selling Kaiser Frasers with, you know, my grandpa's the greeter. You know, his brother is, a, is another salesperson. Uh, his sister is the administrator of the business manager. And a couple of cousins back in the service department. I think it was in mom and pop, one car showroom floor down in the city of St. Louis. And it grew to be, you know, where we are right now. And that's one of the, you know, top 50, top 40, top 30 Chevrolet dealers in the, in the country. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, it still was a situation where he was tough, you know, and always, you know, the, the eye to detail and always critiquing. Micromanaging, oh, yeah. But what was great, but he would call me in the office sometimes, and he'd, you know, give me a, a, an intro, you know, folder to look at, which was a positive number. It was a good deal. And then he'd say, what about this one, which was not so positive, <laughs> you know. But he wanted to know what happened mm -hmm. and always trying to make you better. Mm -hmm. um, but yet, you know, I am a little different. I empower my managers. Mm -hmm. I want them to run their department. If I hear either a phone call, email, see something that I don't like, you know, it's all about communication. Mm -hmm. I'm a big meeting guy. I drive the people at Lawn Chevrolet crazy, but that's yeah. one of the first things I really started doing. A meeting every hour? Uh, yeah. Not quite. But yeah. Yeah, uh, <laughs> some days it yeah. feels like I that. Understand. It's like, oh my God, another <laughs> meeting? Yeah. But, you know, if you don't communicate, if you're not telling your management staff what you expect, mm -hmm. and then getting feedback from them, making them reach out and give you what they expect, not only from you as the owner, uh, but also as far as marketing plans, going month to month and looking at ideas that will bring, you know, a, a better way of life, a much more positive sense of doing business, you know, at Johnny Lawn Duff Yeah, which makes sense. You mentioned sort of that collaborative atmosphere that you've created now and right. one by, based on trust. And one of the big pillars we always talk about on the rise to the top is that a lot of times business can grow by being collaborative as opposed to competitive, one of those big things. And one, one thing that you mentioned, I want to find out more about this, is sort of a program that you put together for business owners and businesses in St. Louis. Tell us a little bit about uh, the supplier pricing and what that is and, and what's going on there. Well, you, you have a, on the invoice. Um, the left-hand margin, there is a set price, uh, which is supplier pricing. You know, each invoice has MSRP, which is a, a manufactured suggested retail price, though we did have a salesman one time tell us it was a Missouri suggested retail price. Okay, why not? That's why it's in sales. Yeah, why don't we call it yeah. that? But, you know, so, and then invoice, and then you have the supplier, it's a set price. So it takes away, you know, that stigmatism of, oh my God, going into a car dealership, and I have to negotiate the price. Yeah, I got to haggle. There's going to be. So we're reaching yeah. out to businesses. We want to reach out and, and, and get you know their database. Mm. Let them know what our specials are, but let them know that this is a place they can come and do business with in retail sales and in service, and they can have a great experience. Mm -hmm. You know, build some relationships. So then it's you know the second time and the third time they come, it gets easier and easier because they're doing business with people that they've done business with before. Right, and it just seems to make sense. It makes sense for you guys right. with, with growing relationships. It makes sense for the company that takes a big, I mean, that's a big stressor <laughs> on companies dealing with that. Do I have to go in and bother people, whatever it may be? But I'm sure people can contact you right. also. We'll make sure to link that up, though, if they oh, want to find out more about the program. Correct. As well. So tell us a little bit more as we wrap it up today, because I know we could go on for hours. Um, but let's wrap it up. You know, we have a lot so of good. entrepreneurs that are out there that are young and young at heart. 
um, and they're trying to, you know, build businesses and grow it, what would be your advice? What would be your top piece of advice for people well, that are yeah. trying to make it? You know, the family business aspect, you know, brought upon hard work. You know, you can get nothing, you know, it's going to come easy. You've, you've got to sometimes roll the sleeves up and do what it takes. And sometimes, yeah, it's, it's some dirty work, but you want to make sure that you're there watching your operation, leading, directing, whether it's within the meetings, whether it's being out on the showroom floor or answering the phones, being accessible to consumers and to employees, uh, and then letting, letting your employees know how much you appreciate what they do for you, you know, for the company, making the team of Johnny Landoff Chevrolet one of the best teams, one of the best Chevrolet dealerships, not only in St. Louis, not only in the state of Missouri, uh, in the Midwest, and then eventually in the country. You know, if you don't have these thoughts and if you don't plan for it, they'll never happen. But it's still, it's still hard work. Well, you know, I mean, nothing, nothing replaces hard work. Oh no, no. I mean, and, and and you know, just being there and keeping an eye on on how it grows, but also planning and making goals. Set those goals high. Don't set a goal where you know, oh, I can reach that maybe with 10 days left in the month. Set it high to where you know those last two or three days, you really have to go after it to get that goal and hit that objective. Well, very cool. Well, thanks, John, for joining us today. Hi, this is a Thank St. You. Louis legend right here on the show. We're blessed oh, that we had you. him. And uh, make sure to check it out at Landoff.com. We'll have all kinds of show notes and links below for you.